Hey everyone, in this episode we'll be covering briefly what VTubing is, the different types of VTubers, and where Rococo hardware and software fits into the VTubing world. We can start with the word itself, VTuber, which actually means virtual YouTuber. This is a bit of a misnomer, of course, because VTubers can stream on any streaming platform, not just YouTube. VTubers are really anyone who streams using a digital avatar instead of their own image. Typically, this is done by using hardware like a webcam, VR equipment, or a full mocap setup like Rococo to power the face and or body and hands of a digital character. Oftentimes, the person behind this digital avatar will remain completely anonymous, and the character will have a fully developed backstory that exists independently of the human operator. Although it's difficult to say where exactly VTubing began, a good place to start is with Kazuna AI, a VTubing character who started streaming officially in 2016 on YouTube. She is credited with coining the term VTuber. As the character's popularity grew and streaming technology advanced, other digital streamers began to appear, as well as production companies and talent agencies that manage and produce large casts of VTubing characters. One of the biggest agencies, whose name you may have seen around the internet, is Hololive. Hololive represents some of the biggest VTubers in the world, including Gaugura, who recently surpassed Kazuna AI as the most subscribed VTuber of all time. Although this might have changed by the time you watch this video. So what exactly do VTubers do in their streams? Well, besides the fact that they are streaming with a digital avatar, VTubers are really like any other type of regular live streamer. VTubers will stream typical gaming content, art streams, singing streams, or just chatting streams, where the VTuber will engage with their chat. So now that we have a general idea of what VTubing is, what are the different types of VTubing? And the first way that we can separate VTubers very generally is whether or not they're what I call an agency streamer or an independent streamer. Let's look at two examples, Gaugura and Code Miko, another popular virtual streamer. Gaugura is represented by Hololive, which means there is an entire team supporting the actual streamer who's piloting the Gaugura avatar. This might mean setting up promotional opportunities, merch, or helping out behind the scenes with tech setup, or to mod the chat. Code Miko, on the other hand, is an entirely or almost entirely independent operation run by a single person. Code Miko is piloted by an ex-gaming developer who already had tons of experience designing and working with digital characters. So she's been able to create and maintain the Code Miko character all by herself, which is a ton of work. Another way to separate VTubers, again, very generally, is by the type of hardware they use to power and control their avatar. This can vary vastly and is probably the most important thing you're considering if you're thinking about getting into VTubing. This is because the type of hardware setup you use to power your character has the most correlation to not only the cost of that setup, but also the capabilities of what your digital avatar is going to be able to do. The great thing is that you can be a VTuber right now, completely for free, if you have a webcam. There are a bunch of different softwares and services that will take a webcam image and use it to power a character's face, as well as maybe limited body and hand movement. We've outlined a bunch of these free softwares in the resource doc if you want to check them out. At the next level up, you can start adding in peripherals like a Leap motion controller, Vive trackers, or a full VR setup to enhance the motion capture capabilities of the character. So this type of VTuber might invest a couple hundred dollars to a thousand dollars to get better fidelity from their movements to their character's movements. A step above that would be VTubers who have a full body mocap setup, which can cost anywhere from a thousand to fifteen thousand plus dollars. Code Miko, for example, uses an Xsense mocap suit, which she reportedly spent somewhere around thirteen grand on. While these setups are more expensive than the others, you also get much more fidelity in the movements and capabilities of your character. You can actively and reliably move around your digital space in a way that isn't really possible with something like a webcam, at least not right now. The best way to understand the VTubing scene and all the different types, however, is of course just to go out and watch some VTubers. I encourage you to check out the VTubing resource doc, where we have links to some of the fantastic VTubers that we've been watching, 
and more info on the VTubing world at large. In the next episode, we're going to walk through how to set up the Rococo SmartSuit Pro, Smart Gloves, and Rococo Facial Motion Capture so that you can start piloting your digital avatar.